On behalf of the entire family, we'd like to welcome everyone here for the funeral service of Deanna Joyce Ashman Tyre. My name is Bishop Blotter, and I've been asked to conduct this meeting. We just recently had a family prayer given by Kurt Tyre, son. We'd like to thank Sister Hillary Robison and Jennifer Lund for providing our music today. We will open by singing hymn number 86. There is also a paper copy on the, on the uh, seats. How Great Thou Art. And afterwards, we will have the invocation by Stephen Ashman, brother.
Our Father in heaven, we assemble here today to pay our respects and love for Deanna Tyre. We are grateful for the opportunity to have the uh, restored gospel upon the earth to recognize the significance of this uh, Savior's atoning sacrifice. We're thankful for the knowledge of the plan of salvation, recognizing that uh, uh, she is in uh, a better place at this time, free from the uh, cares and the troubles and the pains of this world. Uh, we recognize the uh, uh, the family that uh, miss her. We ask thy spirit to be with them, to comfort them, guide and direct their efforts, help them to deal with the, the loss of their uh, <clears throat> mother. And we uh, thank thee for the Savior's atoning sacrifice. Grateful for the plan and, and uh, for his efforts in our behalf to recognize that he allows us the opportunity to uh, repent of our weaknesses and one day return back to his presence. We thank thee for all that we have, all that thou just bless us with each day. Pray for thy protection today for those who might be traveling and uh, ask thee for these blessings and say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. We will uh, follow the program as outlined. We will first have a tribute by Kirk Tyre, son. Then we'll be have a speaker, Todd Tyre, son. Speaker, Brad Tyre, son. Then we will have a musical selection, You Are My Sunshine by the grandchildren and accompanied by Valerie Tyre, daughter-in-law. We will then be privileged to hear from the daughters. First, Lisa Worley, Christy Curtis, and Angela Wheeler. And we'll go to that point. Deanna Joyce Ashton Tyre, on Thursday, April 8th, 2021, at the age of 76, our beloved mother, grandmother, great grandmother, sister, and friend, Deanna Joyce Ashton Tyre, returned to the arms of the loving Heavenly Father. She was born on July 28, 1944, in Afton, Wyoming, to parents Earl Roscoe Ashman and Arlene Joyce Olson Ashman. Deanna's mother passed away when Deanna was six months old. She was then raised by her grandparents, Charles Afton Olson and Yulva Cecil Klein Olson, and later by her father and stepmother, Verla Hillstead Ashman. She was the second oldest of eight children, and she cared for and helped raise her younger siblings. Mom grew up in Star Valley, Wyoming, and in Cache Valley, Utah, graduating from Logan High School in Logan, Utah. Mom loved being with her kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids. She spent countless hours watching and helping raise them. She made each and every one feel loved. Having sleepovers at grandma's was the best. Making her famous chocolate chip cookies and teaching us how it was done created special memories for her family. She had many talents and held several jobs throughout the years, but her greatest gift was being a homemaker taking her children swimming and then topping it off with a stop of Pete Spudnut afterward was a summer favorite. She also made sure her kids had a sand pile to spend countless hours in each summer. She loved playing games, a favorite being checkers. She threw the funnest birthday parties for her children and always had the best food and treats for all to enjoy. Mom was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints having served in several colonies. She married Dennis Ray Tyre on October 21st, 1965. They were the parents of seven children. They were later divorced. Dad passed away in 2015. Mom's life was centered on faith and family. She was a great example to all around her. She loved horses, traveling, and nature, 
and was always thoughtful of the needs of others. She was preceded in death by an infant son, Craig Dennis Tyre, a grandson, Keegan Hunter Tyre, a granddaughter, Kirsten Diane Curtis, a sister, Alois Annette Ashmond Robertson, a sister-in-law, Janie Ann Clark Ashmond, and by her parents and stepmother. She is survived by three sons, Kirk Tyre, Todd Valerie Tyre, Brad Tyre, by three daughters, Lisa Richard Worley, Christy Curtis Curtis, and Angela J.J. Wheeler, by four brothers, Steve Maida Ashmond, Roger Linda Ashmond, Kevin Adele Ashmond, and Lynn Lisa Ashmond, by two sisters, Jean Fred Putnam and Dawn Ashmond, and by 30 grandchildren and 15 great grandchildren. Uh, I wish to bear my testimony this time to know, uh, to let you know that I absolutely believe with all of my heart. And I know because of the spiritual inspiration that I've received uh, throughout my life that my mom is not in that coffin, that that is her body, and that someday she'll be resurrected. Her spirit is alive and well in the afterlife, and she's in paradise with family and friends. And that someday when she's resurrected, her body and her spirit will be reunited in their perfect form. She'll have no more pain and no more suffering, that she'll be at peace. And my prayer is that all of us, all of the family members and loved ones and relatives, that we will live our lives in accordance with the gospel so that someday we can be reunited with her and our other family members and loved ones who've departed us or will in the future. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm mostly winging this, but this had a few notes right wrote down this morning. But the main thing I want to be thankful for today is uh, my family, my brothers, and my sisters. And especially this day, I want to thank for my sisters. They have done so much, and Curtis. They've done so much, my mom. A lot of times I just kill my life to work. But they were there all the time. <laughs> my mom's such a good mom, brother. <laughs> so thankful she took my rowdy butt to church. <laughs> and uh, I was exposed to good people. That was about, I mean, she didn't do it all alone. I had all these people, my teachers, and scout leaders, and uh, holding me into who I am today, which I'm very uh, grateful for. Mom was a lot of fun. Dad was more serious and laid back. Mom, mom was a lot of fun, but then she had a pretty hot head. And... Uh, I think I got that from her. <laughs> it's getting better the older I get. <laughs> oh, and all the fun times we used to have. There's so countless many times. I remember just one tiny little thing that's kind of funny that always stands out to me is that we were all in the car after getting our famous Steve's 25 cent hamburger. And dad's at work. And, Normally would take like one bite of it and shove it underneath the seat. And <laughs> it was in the old LTD. It was famous to have for having LTD cars, the Ford LTD and, and Kirk or all of us said, floor it, mom, floor it. And she, she gunned it and then the whole car went. 
<laughs> That's why I do. <laughs> Vacations, they were great, and sometimes uh, very, I would say, kind of redneck. But I loved them. I love going to Wyoming. I love the uh, Ashman and Tyre reunions that we had. It was a lot of fun, and it all focused around family. And you can see that here today with uh, aunts, my aunts and uncles on both sides, uh, and friends. And I just really. I really had a good upbringing. Sorry, dude. Uh, she put up a lot with my teenage years, dealing with me and Brad Hopped, being a bunch of <laughs> dorks and Dave Hester and well, all the guys. But uh, I think we turned out pretty good. I was new since I was a little boy. But, uh, I still remember uh, uh, Dennis Griffin from the, who was our old bishop in the fourth ward in Providence. I still remember when I was uh, really young, he was teaching us about the plan of salvation. And uh, I knew it to be true. No matter all the bonehead things I do from there on out, I, I just knew it was true and it kept me coming back it was like my compass it kept on helping me stay focused and come back around instead of uh, coming too far and being led astray uh, I, just, I just remember walking in a mom blood praying reading her scriptures you know she had a hard time but things that frustrated her and they wanted it her and dad wanted to make it i'm pretty sure all parents may have children they would like them to turn out perfect you know all families aren't perfect but we sure had a lot of fun and uh, even the bad times that were turn out to be the good times she had a hope and love for all of her children and family and loved ones that we could all be together forever. She had a mighty change of heart the last few years of her life. Just like, just like my dad. And uh, I know they're, they, they got divorced and stuff, but us kids could see that they. Uh, Still love each other. Uh, one more funny story. I know it's kind of lame, but every time we went to Star Rally, we'd come down Birdie Canyon. And by the way, it would take about an hour or two hours to get to Birdie because we have to stop at every convenience store and get there. And another two or three hours, and it only takes you a two hours and 15 minutes to get that started out wrong if you drive the speed limit two and a half hours. But it was take about half a day anyway. But uh, we'd come down from Bear Lake, uh, the hill there, and at the halfway through, she would say, I hate those flowers. I hate the way those flowers smell. And my dad would lean over to her every year. Yeah, no, it's the brakes, the vehicles. That's what she smells, the burning of the brakes. <laughs> And she, she would always know it isn't those flowers. <laughs> anyway, I love you, Mom, and I have a testimony, and I borrowed off a of borrowed light from you for a long time, and I have it for myself. And I thank you so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm on. I wanted to start by reading a poem. 
that I felt was well, kind of summarize my thoughts uh, today. It's called The uh, Watcher by Margaret uh, Whitmer. It says, she always leaned to watch for us, anxious if we were late, in the winter by the window, in the summer by the gate. And though we mocked her tenderly, who had such foolish care, the long way home would seem more safe because she waited there. Her thoughts were all so full of us. She never could forget. And so I think that where she is, she must be watching yet. Wait till we come home to her, anxious if we are late, watching from heaven's window, learning from heaven's gate. I wanted to share a few of my, I guess, some of the favorite memories. Uh, they're kind of simple, but they're about mom. And they they just remind me of kind of who she was and, and her deep love that she had for all of us. But for me, her son, you know, individually. So as Todd pointed out, you know, I think uh, we were kind of a rumbunctious kind of crew. And I remember uh, when we were younger, mom used to. She gets so tired, you know, chasing us all around and she would have us come in and she got this idea that it'd be fun to have us go take naps with her. And she used to take us in the room. She put blankets on the ground and she'd put that bolt. She chained the bolt on there. As soon as mom was asleep, we'd like ninja like skills. We'd get up there. We'd unbolt that just slow as can be. We'd be out playing. She'd come out and all worried about us. One day when I was out playing, I decided to walk across the street. As a little boy, and I went down to the library because so I wanted to go go to the library. I turned around, and mom's there, and she's just bawling. I, you know, I had freaked her out a little bit, you know, crossing the road as a young young kid, and she was worried that you know I wouldn't be here. Just showed that how much she had you know love love for me individually and for us. Um, I wanted to tell a little kind of a side funny story. So as everyone may know, uh, my mom, what a wonderful human being. She loved to laugh, absolutely loved to laugh. And she, some of my favorite memories are just like when we got there and we laughed. And I'm going to tell a story that will embarrass me a little bit. But my brother, Kirk, and my mom were in the car when I was young. And we went to the Budge Clinic and mom didn't want to go in and get the medicine. And so she sent me in and Kirk and mom were like, don't touch this, don't touch that. You're going to get something, you know. So I go in and I get the medicine and I come out that door. And I'm elbowing and I'm kicking the door and I didn't want to touch it because I didn't want to get something. And I, I come out and Kirk and my mom are just rolling. They're like, they're leaned over, just laughing, a little spastic kid, you know. And I just, you know, things like that. Just we had these odd way of just these comical things that just happened. And we've had beautiful times and beautiful memories of just laughing heartily with mom. In high school, oftentimes I'd stay out late, like really late. And when I stayed out really late with friends and that mom was worried about where I was. And when I'd stay out really late, like, you know, one, two in the morning and that I'd come home and she'd peer out the window when I'd pull up and she would, I'd come in the house and she'd have cocoa on the stove for me. She wouldn't judge me. She wouldn't ask where I was. She just was there to listen if I wanted to talk. Nine out of 10 times, I'd just drink my cocoa and go to bed, but I knew she loved me. I knew she cared about me. And the other memory I want to share is that of my, my two oldest kids. So many may know that I've lived away from, you, from Utah for about 20 years on and off. And so my kids didn't get a lot of opportunity to, to see mom and to be around cousins. But my two oldest, thanks to my older brother, Kirk, and my other siblings, were able to bring my two oldest up. And I want to thank all of you guys for loving my kids. <laughs> mom helped raise my, my two oldest 
Keegan and, you know, his cousins were best friends. And uh, mom was always there. And I love her for that. She unconditionally loved my kids and loved, loved all of her grandkids. So this past Thursday, I received a call from my dear sister telling me it was time to come. Mom wasn't waking up. As I was driving, I had YouTube up and I came, I just saw this picture. I felt impressed to click on it. It was President Elder uh, David A. Bednar of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. The talk is entitled, As Long as the World Shall Stand. In there, he goes on, he talks about different things. But one of the things he compares is he compares modern day miracles with those when the church was restored. And he talked about that miracles still exist. And in that moment, I had a little bit of faith. And I just said, God, let me say goodbye to mom. I know a lot of people think, you know, that's just minor. But to me, it was a miracle. I was able to drive up to my sister's house, walk in and sit next to mom. I was able to hold her hand. Just like I did my dear sweet boy. Six months ago, as he lay dying in the hospital. There's nothing that I could do to switch places with him or her. As I caressed their hands and I told them both that I loved them. I told them it was okay to go to God. I told them that they were amazing, that they <laughs> they had influenced our lives so deeply and that we loved them. I told mom. She, uh, she said something really sweet a little while ago. And she told us, she goes, you know, after Keegan passed, she goes, I'm going to be the first one to give, your, to give my grandson a hug. I asked mom to watch over Keegan in heaven to love him for me since I can't be there with him. I love my sweet mom. And I love her for giving me the most amazing brothers and sisters nieces and nephews <laughs> my five beautiful children I love you mom Thank you. 
So I just want to tell the grandkids that that was beautiful. And it sounded a lot happier last night when we were practicing. But what do you, what can we expect, you know? We're sad that grandma's gone. Um, Mom had her hands full with us six kids. She had four of us under the age of four by the time she was 26. I think I had my first baby when I was 26. I can't imagine. But Christine Angie came a few years later. She spent countless hours making a wonderful childhood for us. Sports, dance, piano, swimming lessons, 4-H, camping, and family picnics are just a few memories. She loved us individually, like Brad said, each in our own different way. I remember the hours she spent at the hospital pounding on my back when I would get pneumonia, which is several times a year when I was younger. I'm sure it was exhausting for her. Mom told us at the time when she had three of us, when three of us were up at the hospital, I had pneumonia, Kirk had a concussion, and Todd had croup all at the same time. So they kept just going up to the hospital. Um, I am grateful for the past seven and a half weeks being able to care for her. This has been a very tender mercy for all of us. She told me that it was fun to have a roommate as I would stay with her several times a week overnight in the same room with her. Um, we played checkers, you know, during the day and visited with grandkids. We had f funny moments, one of, one of which we didn't even think she was paying attention, but she, she April pulled me and told me I had a spider on my back and I really believed her. And I was like, Christine Curtis, why aren't you helping me? But, <laughs> and then she's like, April pulls just like really matter of fact, we were like laughing about it. <laughs> Sometimes in the middle of the night, we'd eat popsicles together. She really loved her ice chips and popsicles. Um, combing and cutting her hair like, was a privilege. Um, she shared some of her memories with us and we got some little video clips and some voice, um, voice things where we recorded it. My favorite thing was the sweet moments that I had that I would tell her that I loved her, whether it was tucking her in bed or whatever, and then having her say it back to me, that she loved me back. Mom adored her grandchildren, and they loved her. Plenty of treats were to be found at Grandma's, along with coloring, playing G.I. Joe, riding up and down the hall on her jazzy or wheelchair was a favorite, even though it kind of embarrassed me. I was like, kids, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so still living. Or having sleepy cozy, or having cozy sleepovers at her house was a favorite too. She was also known to slip the kids a few $20 bills when, when moms weren't looking. But they would come home and I'd be like, where'd you get that money, grandma? You know, like, <laughs> Love for mom is shown to her family, friends, missionaries, and strangers. We have lots of fond memories of grandma Olson. Mom made extra effort to make time for her in our lives. One thing mom taught me is to have hope. I learned, I learned to love the temple because of her. She had such a great desire and hope that she would make it there one day. There were plenty of times I would find her in her room reading her scriptures, just like Todd was saying. She loved Jesus Christ. Her love of the gospel really helped my own testimony grow. In January of 2016, she was able to go to the Logan Temple. What a wonderful experience that was to share with her. In 2 Nephi 31, it says, Wherefore, you must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of God and of all men. Wherefore, if ye shall press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ and, and endure to the end, behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. Mom had hoped that she would get better. We, we didn't tell her that she was going to pass away, but she just kept hoping for the future. She wasn't ready to leave us. 
That being said, she is happy now. She is reunited with her loved ones on the other side of the veil. I want to share a sweet letter she wrote to her first baby, Craig, whom she lost when he was six days old. My son, Craig, my son, how tiny he is. It has been a miracle to see him come from within. I watched and beheld a life come to earth, the joy I cannot express to hold this tiny baby boy for one hour. Then he must sleep. Oh, to hold that boy forever, I would give all I possess. Sorry. The next day, I held my boy, my life. He breathed in with little jolts. I asked the doctor to look at him. The day is gone. The last day I will ever hold my son for the doctor came. My son will die. His heart, his heart. Oh, I would give to him my heart, my life, my soul, but that he would live and let me love this little boy again. Now my boy's in heaven. Now I can plainly see the Lord is taking care of him. He's the highest my boy can be, love mother. So when, when my own son, Reagan, has the same heart problem that Craig had, I was just crying and crying because that's all I knew was that death came from it, you know, for my brother. But mom told me when she found out he had a heart problem that she told me everything would be okay. And mom knew she had the spirit with her. Um, so in April's conference, President Ann Russell Ballard taught us that Jesus wants us to know God is a loving Heavenly Father. Knowing that we are loved by our Heavenly Father will help us know who we are and know that we belong to the, his great eternal family. Because we are the spirit children of God, everyone has a divine origin, nature, and potential. Each of us is a beloved spirit, son or daughter of Heavenly Parents. This is our identity. This is who we really are. I speak of hope in Christ, not as wishful thinking. Instead, I speak as hope, as an expectation that will be realized. Um, and part of that, I forgot to put it in here, but part, I think I said President Nelson, but it was actually President Ann Russell Ballard so, that taught us that this last April. Um, I just want you to know that mom understood that she was a blood daughter of God. I am so grateful to have learned more about having hope through her example. We love you, mom. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, I have to write my thoughts down because I'm not as brave as my siblings. Oh, how I miss my sweet mom. She'll truly be blessed and uh, missed, and she was such a great mom, the best. Um, I have so many great memories of mom. Among all of her great traits, she was always such a good sport and willing to do silly things while I document it for our family's entertainment. Whether it be funny Snapchats, dancing to music, or funny pictures and video clips, she would roll her eyes or say, that's so weird, but participate and laugh anyway. Shopping with mom was always an adventure. We would run into a store to grab something she or I needed. Sometimes I needed to run to another aisle and grab another item. Um, and then return back quickly, like 30 seconds tops to meet up with mom again, to find her nowhere in sight. She was missing in Walmart. I would look up and down the aisles at Walmart and close to where I last left her. I would finally call her on the phone and she would let me know where she was at the, was at in the store, um, which was nowhere near where I left her. Um, mom could shop like no other. Once when we were shopping, we were in the cleaning aisle and I told mom about what was going on in the news and that some people had been partaking of Tide Pods. She was shocked and asked, why would they do that? So I got a package of Tide Pods and had mom take a silly picture with her mouth open as if she was going to eat them. I know it's twisted humor, but it's now a family treasure. Mom loved to play the game checkers, and she was really good at it. Many checker games were played recently. 
My husband Curtis played with her the other day, and if he made a move to jump one or two of her checkers, she would shake her fist at him like this with a slight smile. She had such a fun personality and was always a good sport. Mom was the best grandma who dearly loved her grandchildren. She attended many sporting events, science fairs, dance recitals, and other activities to support them. She spent countless hours tending and loving each grandchild. She helped raise many of them and loved them all so much. For me personally, she helped me raise my son, Brayden, and instilled in him many great values and traits. They have always been really close and thanks to technology. They've been able to stay connected, even though he's serving in the Marine Corps and unable to be here in person. Mom taught the grandkids to make the world's best chocolate chip cookies and homemade lemonade. She always had her cupboard stocked with the best foods and treats and the freezer was always filled with yummy ice cream. Mom loves to draw pictures, play games, and make crafts with the grandkids. She also loved to travel, travel, paint, and spend time with family. She dearly loved all of her children, her son-in-laws, daughter-in-law, and great-grandkids and grandkids. Mom and dad raised the four older siblings, we call them, and then came me and Angie, who gave mom and dad more than a few gray hairs. My siblings are the best gift that my parents gave me. We are all best friends and we stay in touch often. The grandchildren are close because of the importance of family that mom instilled in all of us. Mom instilled the love of faith and family in me, my siblings and her grandchildren. She kept in touch with extended family whom we would often stop to visit with um, on our travels. She welcomed family to stay at our home and always made everyone feel loved and comfortable. Although mom had faced many challenges and heartache in her life, she always made the best of it. It's been fun, it's been fun to hear mom talk on the phone with her best friend and cousin Lana and other family and friends and that, that she hadn't been able to connect with for quite a while because of COVID. Um, and to visit with her big brother in person. That was a real treat for my mom. I found a poem my great-grandmother Olson had that reads, Our Life Guide. To do to others as I would that they should do to me would make me honest, kind, and good as children ought to be. Whether I'm at home or school or walking out abroad, I never shall forget this rule of Jesus Christ our Lord. Make someone else happy, just try it and see, and you will be happy as happy can be. Love is stronger than hate. Love will save the world. Love is gentle. Love is kind, and love is patient. Our mom was all of these things, and I'm grateful for her loving example towards all. I've seen my mom taking people from all walks of life and always giving to the homeless or less fortunate, even when she didn't have a lot herself. She's truly been an inspiration of love and light to me. I remember having a family reunion or get together in Jackson Hole, Wyoming and arriving at my aunt and uncle's home. The cousins came out to greet us um, and mom opened the trunk and got the cooler and it was loaded with all sorts of sugary candy and treats. And we all partake, partook of it. Um, I don't think any of the other adults were appreciative or thankful that my mom ruined everyone's appetites. But as long as the kids were happy, my mom was happy. Um, when I picked up mom seven or eight weeks ago to come home to live with us, I asked her what she wanted to eat and she requested a mango a go go jamba juice and a Whopper Junior with heavy mayo and tomato. Um, Mom recently loved eating popsicles, like Lisa said, and my sisters and I enjoyed many late night and early morning visits at the kitchen table or in her room talking and laughing as she enjoyed one, two, or even sometimes three icy popsicles, and the kiwi strawberry were her favorite. She was pretty darn protective of them. My memories are so many with my mom and how I wish I could make many more. I love and miss you so much, Mom. It's not goodbye. It's see you soon. In the name of Jesus Christ.
<laughs> um, I just wanted to say a couple things about my mom that she'll be great with this. Um, by all these kids, um, her greatest accomplishment was her family and her kids and her grandbabies. I remember the switch of mom's personality when Michael was born. Oh, it was like a new, it was a new world for her. And you cheer. They kept having more and more and she's so proud of them. She lived through her grandkids. And she was so proud of them. She loved you guys. And she'll never be far. She'll always be close to you. <laughs> um, she was quite the woman. Um, like you've heard, she's, she gave all of herself to others and never took. Um, I remember I said a mean word. Oh, a mean thing about somebody walking down the street one time, and um, I was just I was just um, saying normal, you know, bratty kid stuff, and my mom automatically stopped me in my track and said, "You don't know what they go through, and you don't know the person that they are." And ever since then, I've always tried so hard never to judge another, and that's what my mom was. She's loving and caring and giving. And she's up there hugging her baby and met her mom for the first time and holding our Keegan for us that we won't be able to do for a long time, but to know that they're together um, is a blessing. And she loves each and every one of you. Thank you. We'd like to give a few minutes to any grant of the grandkids that would like to come up and, and share a memory of their grandmother. Well, um, I didn't plan on getting up, but um, I feel like something that I need to highlight about grandma that's been talked about a little bit is just how um, just how welcoming she was to all of us. Obviously, we married into the family when mom and Todd got married and coming into a whole different family it's just kind of there are times when you just don't feel like you really belong or like you're part of the group and grandma I remember one time I went over with all the cousins with Jordan and Dallin and Reagan and Keegan and Braden and over to grandma's house and Kay and I sat on the couch and it was pretty obvious that we were uncomfortable. <laughs> I think that it just took some time to feel comfortable in the family. But grandma came over. Grandma came over and told me that what's hers is ours and that we could have whatever we wanted. And she just made me feel loved. <laughs> She taught me a lot, and I'm very thankful that she's my grandma and that I was able to spend the time with her that I did. She also taught us on many different instances to be a little more cautious in life, and we didn't always follow that advice very well, but... I love grandma, and I'm going to miss her. 
but I'm grateful that she gets to gets to go see Keegan. Anyways, I um I'll miss you, Grandma. That was wonderful, Nick. I'm too short. I can't see over the podium, so I can't tell if anybody else wanted to, to come up. But I probably know Deanne the least out of anybody in here. Um, she moved in with, with Curtis and Christy and, and I'm the bishop of that ward, the Meadow Lane ward. And Christy called me one evening and said, hey, my mom's, my mom's moved in. She's on in-home hospice. And uh, we would love to bring her records into our ward because she would love to get a type of recommend. I'm like, that's great. Let's bring her records in. So we brought her records in. Um, I think the theme of this service has been faith and family. Two things that Deanna really had and instilled into her kids and her grandkids. Um, I just want to go through a couple important dates in Deanna's life. July 28th, 1944. She was born in Afton, Wyoming. She was born here on Earth on July 28th, but she just made the journey from our heavenly parents and she was born into a loving family. September 23rd, 1953. That's when Deanna was baptized. September 27th, 1953. She was confirmed a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. January 23rd, 2016, she took out her endowments in the Logan Temple. And then a date that I'll remember is March 14th, 2021. That's when I first had a phone call with Deanna and was able to do the Temple Recommend interviews with her. Because of COVID, we couldn't meet face to face. But as I went through those 14 questions, I was almost shocked and surprised of how alert and how smart and how firm her answers were. And many times after I asked the question, she would bear her testimony to me. So maybe I was one of the, the last people here on earth to, to hear her sweet testimony. I know she has a testimony of our Savior. I know she has a testimony of the plan of salvation and of the priesthood power that's here on the earth that seals things here on earth and in heaven. April 8th, 2021. 
is when Deanna passed away. But I add my testimony to Kirk's and others that she's not gone. Her body is still here with us, but her spirit is in paradise. In Alma chapter 40, verse 12, the prophet Alma says, And then it came to pass, the spirit of all those who are righteous are received into a state of happiness, which is called paradise. A state of rest, a state of peace, where they shall rest from all their troubles and all care and sorrow. I know that Deanna prepared herself. She was preparing herself for this journey across the veil. She has a current temple recommend. She has a strong testimony. She has a loving family. I feel like I've been able to get to know Deanna being here today. And really I've known her kind of throughout my life because I went to school with Brad and, and Lisa. Um, I knew Todd. He had to get his personality from somewhere. <laughs> um, but what a, what a sweet tribute. It's great. I know that the gospel is true. I know that we will see each other again. Families are meant to be eternal. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to recognize the par Paul Bears. Um, Kirk Tyre, son. Todd Tyre, son. Brad Tyre, son. Michael Tyre, grandson. Curtis Curtis, son-in-law. J.J. Wheeler, son-in-law. Richard Worley, son-in-law. Dallin Worley, grandson. And the honorary Paul Bears, Jordan Worley, Braden Tyre, Caleb Tyre, Hayden Dirsch, Tyler Curtis, Reagan Worley, Keegan Tyre, Ty Dirsch, Chet Wheeler, Ronan Tyre, Nick Dirsch, Jeff Curtis, Nick Curtis. <clears throat> they wanted me just to mention that after the closing hymn and prayer, um, they will direct the pallbearers to come up and help with the, the casket. For all those that are joining the procession, uh, we would ask you to please turn on your headlights and they're actually going to go out and then go north and then turn east. Um, but if you would just like to follow the hearse in the procession, that would be great. We will close by singing hymn number 100, Nearer My God to Thee, and the benediction will be given by Kevin Ashman, brother.
our Father in heaven. <clears throat> We're grateful to come before thee this day to celebrate the life of our sister, our mother, grandmother, and friend, Deanna. We're grateful for the many blessings that we enjoy. We're grateful for the beauty of this earth that we get to live here, for the opportunities to come to us. We're grateful for our ancestors, for the love of family that they instilled upon us. We're grateful for this opportunity that we had to journey through life with Deanna, some of us more than others. We're grateful for the ups and downs, the happiness and the sadness that we've experienced, for the love that we have and share with each other. We're especially grateful for the great plan of salvation and the plan of happiness that that was provided for us. We're grateful for this and know that we can be together, that our associations are with each other will be permanent later on. We're especially grateful for our Savior, Jesus Christ, for what he has done for us, that he has provided a way for us to be families forever. This I say in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.